to root, lose the dollar, do you? Okay, so we will save the dollar. Now, I like the explosive triacetone trichloroxide. I'm going to stand behind it and shielding myself. Hold your hand up a little bit and out a little bit, and we're going to see what happens when we ignite the triacetone trichloroxide. Oh! And so, you see, Zach still has five functioning fingers, I think. Peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is what you find in your home medicine cabinet for disinfecting your wounds. This is about 10 times more concentrated. So it will actually burn your hands without having to cut. But <laughs> we're going to take our 30% hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to dump it into this flask. Now hydrogen peroxide is not very stable. Hydrogen peroxide actually degrades over time. It breaks down into water and oxygen gas. So if you look in there very carefully, you might be able to see bubbles that are the uh, decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Do you see any small bubbles in there? Yeah. No, you can't, because it's going too slow. <laughs> right now, it's going way too slow for us to notice. If there were any bubbles, it was if there were any bubbles, it was just from me shaking it. What I want to do is I want to speed up that decomposition. I'm going to speed up that decomposition with a chemical whose purpose it is to accelerate a chemical reaction. That's going to be my catalyst. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of soap to this reaction mixture. The reason I'm going to add soap is because the decomposition is going to produce oxygen gas. It's going to produce oxygen. If I have uh, oxygen gas produced, I'm going to end up making soap bubbles, and I should be able to see foam. Now, I apologize to those of you in the back, it may be a little difficult to see. You might have to look closely to see the formation of the uh, foam from the catalyst, but this should occur. <laughs> The decomposition takes place much more rapidly in the presence of a catalyst. The decomposition takes place much more quickly in the presence of a catalyst. We get the rapid generation of oxygen gas, which combined with the soap makes the foam which shoots up out the top of the flask. This is the one thing that we do that makes a mess. We didn't do too badly. You know, we kept most of it on the container. Not all of it, though. Okay, um, as long as I got, I'll do one more, as long as I got the table pushed back. I always tell my students, everything you're seeing here is part of my general chemistry course. At some point during the semester, you're going to see these, and we're going to spend much more time talking about the chemistry involved. You're getting just the surface. You're getting just the basics of, uh, uh, you know, sort of the demo thing. There's only one day of the year where I do a demonstration, which is solely for the purpose of the demonstration. There's only one day a year where I do a gratuitous demo. I want you to guess what day of the year it is. You may be able to guess from the floor. <coughs> nah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, if you want to clean the floor, it's just go light and let's see. Uh, the most important thing is I need a lighter than first. Edwards. Okay, so I'm going to try some artwork on the floor here. You've got to be ready to turn off the lights. <laughs> floor artwork. Okay, so I want you to guess what day of the year we do this demo. You guys know too well. Hey. Later. Talk to your students. 
The flaming green shamrock of chemistry. Boric acid. Boric acid mixed with methanol forms a borate ester that burns with a brilliant green flame. And so, when you get the two together, you get the flaming green shamrock of chemistry. Oh, there's my Lego podium now. <laughs> All right, the flaming green shamrock of chemistry. My only gratuitous demo from the year. You can still see the markings on the floor from this last St. Patrick's Day. All right, turn up the lights. Let's see here. Oh, we got lots to do. Woo, we got 20 minutes. We got stuff to do. Um, let's see here. Students sometimes ask me, what my favorite demonstration is. What is my favorite demonstration? All the different ones that I do. My favorite demonstration is a demonstration of the reaction of gases. Gases with odd numbers of electrons. The reason this is my favorite demonstration is twofold. First, I never know if it's going to work. <laughs> Second of all, you can keep the whole thing in your pocket. So we're going to now look at the reaction of odd electron gases, as long as you can find me that uh, Six-polar HCl. So in the, in the bin that was supposed to be our uh, odd electron gases, there should be six-polar HCl. That's the one thing we need. The one thing that I didn't put in my pocket, I figured it probably wasn't a good idea to put the acid in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. All right, so what we're going to do, first thing we need to do is we need to generate a gas that contains an odd number of electrons. A gas that contains an odd number of electrons. And I'm going to do that by reacting sodium chloride, a small amount, with hydrochloric acid. If I add a few drips of hydrochloric acid, you should see the formation of a yellow gas. A yellow gas in the test tube. We're going to add this slowly, making sure we get a full test tube here. We may add, need to add a little bit more of the sodium chloride. I want a full test tube full of this odd ion. Well, that's what it's supposed to do, but not yet. So, there you go. There's your demo. I don't know why it didn't wait for the last ingredient, but it did it. That's why I said I like that one, because you never know what it's going to scare the heck out of me. <laughs> Those odd electron gases probably reacted with some oxygen that was in there. The odd electron gases end up reacting very quickly. It's one of the fastest known chemical reactions, the reaction of those odd electron gases. If anybody who's taking chemistry knows, gases, materials, do not like to have odd numbers of electrons. Everything likes to be paired. Uh, all right. You guys are here in Potsdam. We've talked a little bit about chemistry. Chemistry here now, you know, chemistry of the 21st century is going to be absolutely wonderful. There's going to be so many dramatic changes that take place in our society because of chemistry. Some of the remarkable chemistry that goes around us, uh, on around us, we see every day and don't even think about it. Here I have an example of a super absorbent polymer. This material is not too different from the type of polymer that you might find in a baby diaper. The idea here is that this material is designed to absorb large quantities of water. I have 20 grams of polymer. 20 grams of polymer, I'm going to add 400 grams of water and see what happens. If I add my water to my super absorbent polymer, something very remarkable is going to happen in just a matter of seconds. The water <laughs> is completely absorbed. And we have something which is near and dear to your heart in Potsdam, New York. What do you think that is? Snow? Snow? 